Every NBA season, we see players make huge leaps in their game to become stars overnight or take the next step to NBA superstar. And with this upcoming season, there's a bunch of candidates to take that next jump as well. So let's go over who we think is ready. Let's get to it. Coming in at number 10 is Tim Hardaway Jr. Since Melo has finally been traded, the question now for the Knicks is who's going to step up and be the main scorer? Most would assume Porzingis, but maybe not. Another candidate could be Tim Hardaway Jr., who averaged 19 points per 36 minutes on a team with Paul Millsap, Schroeder, and Dwight Howard last year. So one would assume without the other high usage guys to share the ball with, considering he's one himself, he will get plenty of chances to rake up stats this season. And number nine is Sky LeBissier. Sky went from one of the best high school prospects to an underwhelming college player at Kentucky, who still got drafted in the first because of his potential. And towards the end of that season, started to show why he was so highly regarded. How often does that work out? Post All-Star break, he averaged 11 points and six boards in 22 minutes. And the last month of the season, 13 and five in 30 minutes. And this is coming from an extremely raw big man. With the guidance of Zebo on the court, Sky has the potential to take his game to the next level and truly live up to his once high expectations once and for all. And number eight is Willie Hernan Gomez. Porzingis wasn't the only big man getting buckets on the Knicks last season. Hernan Gomez averaged a smooth 11 and a half points and 9.2 rebounds post All-Star break for the Knicks. His only competition for the five this year will be over the hill Joakim Noah and better served on the bench Kyle Quinn. so a starting job should be secure after impressing last season. So him and Przingis will make a nice little high-low option for the offense at 2K18. And number seven on the list is Yusuf Nurkic. Will finally play in a full season as a starter finally give 2K the evidence to improve Nurkic's rating? With Denver, when Nurkic got minutes, it wasn't odd to see a 15 point, 10 rebound, 2 block, 2 steal type of night. The thing was, he was shifted back and forth from the starting lineup to the bench where his minutes weren't consistent anyways, or he was dealt with a bunch of injuries. So those who didn't pay close attention didn't know the beast that laid in waiting, until he got to Portland, where in his 20 games with the team, he averaged 15 points, 10 boards, 3 assists, 2 blocks, and 1 steal a game, and was the key reason the Blazers won 14-6 down the stretch and made the playoffs. Does that sound like a 79 overall player? Nurkic is still only 23 and finally will have a stable situation as the team's number one starting center. So the only thing that will hold him back is his health as he's no stranger to the injury report. And number six is Brandon Ingram. With all the high usage players either leaving for free agency or traded this offseason, the only thing Ingram will have to worry about this year is living up to the number two pick status and receiving sweet passes from Lonzo Ball. Often compared to Kevin Durant pre-draft, Ingram shot 40% from the field and 29% from three last season, so he sort of has a far ways to go to live up to those high expectations. But fortunately for him, everything seems to be set up for him to do so. Ingram will be asked to take on the heavier scoring load this season. With the increased chances and fewer mouths to feed on the offensive side of the ball, he can begin to live up to those KD comparisons. And number five is Zach Levine. Levine, since he's gotten into the league, has been known as one of the most overpowered players in the game because of his ability to shoot threes and duck on cats. Well, here's his opportunity to finally show he's the guy. He averaged 18 points per game per 36 the last two seasons as the third option behind Towns and Wiggins. And now will be the most established scorer on the Bulls team that has very few established scores. Looking over their roster, it gets a little ugly, depending on how well marketing does. And if Dunn turns the corner, we'll determine just how crazy Levine's stats will be when he does come back. But I'll be surprised if he does the average in the low to mid-20s. And number four is Dennis Schroeder. Technically, he kind of broke out last season replacing Jeff Teague and actually balling. But it only ended up with him at an OK 79 overall. Now with the Hawks shipping off Dwight and letting go of Hardaway Jr. and Millsap, we basically have a Westbrook Thunder situation here, minus the triple-double part. He's a score first point guard whose second option is Kent Bazemore, who's a nice player, but no. So his stats are probably going to go up this season. He drives to the paint relentlessly, so his field goal percentage will never be terrible. So with his added responsibility this season, his stats are sure to rise. 
At three is Miles Turner. With Paul George out the way, we'll finally see what Miles Turner is made of. Now, he won't be the only guy in charge of scoring for the Pacers as they have Oladipo and Collison, but Turner has the most potential of the three to put up a monster season, so why not now? He's like a poor man's Towns or Embiid who really hasn't had the time to shine to be the guy yet like the other two. His ability to go on the paint, step back and knock down a three, and play defense leaves him in elite company, and I'm excited to see him take it to the next level. At two is Rodney Hood. It's Rodney Hood's time to shine, with Gordon Hayward moving on to greener pastures. And the Jazz essentially swap and score first George Hill for the pass first Ricky Rubio, Hood becomes the main source of scoring in the Jazz starting lineup. That is unless Rudy Gobert learns a post move that is. So he'll have every chance to become a 20 points per game scorer. Not to mention the good looks he'll be receiving from Ricky Rubio as a spot up shooter. He struggled last year with injuries and ISO Joe stealing his shine towards the end of the season. But if Hood can develop into more than just a three-point shooter, he can take his game to the next level and certainly improve off his 12.7 points per game last season. And on this new look Jazz squad, they're going to need him. And Sports Gamers Online number one player prime to break out is D'Angelo Russell. So far, the bright spot in Russell's career has been being picked number two in the draft. Because, I mean, there was the whole Nick Young thing. Byron Scott didn't like him. Walton didn't use him enough. Jordan Clarkson and Lou Will was getting fourth quarter PT over Buddy, so he really never found his group. Then he was shipped off to make way for Lonzo Ball and the big baller brand. So off went Russell to Brooklyn. But despite all the drama that surrounded his time in LA, he's still one of the best young talents in the league at 21 years young, and is now going to a team that is in desperate need of a go-to franchise type guy. The Nets, despite their many offseason moves that includes acquiring Russell for Brooke Lopez basically, still don't have much in terms of talent. So the opportunity is there for Russell to turn into the player Laker fans hoped he will become. The Nets do have Jeremy Lin, but they play the same position, so I can see Lin being the sixth man. Then a few catch and shoot guys in the starting lineup in Allen Crabb and Damari Carroll. So D'Lo will get plenty of chances to show out this season and finally show what he's got without the pressure that comes with playing in LA. So I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. I'm talking 22, 23 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists type numbers. And you already know he's going to drop 40 on the Lakers in one of their two games. So it makes sense why D'Angelo Russell sits his top sports gamers online, top 10 players primed to break out this season. Sorry, sports gamer, do you agree with the list? And if not, what is a player you think is primed to break out this season and receive a nice low ratings bump? Leave it in the comments down below. And stay tuned for more NBA 2K18 content here at Sports Gamers Online. So subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss anything we put out. I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching and be good, y'all.